Hello, welcome back to another fresh episode of the Key Point that comes your way every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 30 a.m. and 5 30 p.m. You can follow us on YouTube, equally on Facebook. And now we are going to talk today about education, school failure, and school dropouts. We do understand that education is a cornerstone of individual growth and societal progress. Yet the challenges that comes with school failure and school dropout is a critical issue that we need to look at. We know education as a whole has helped us evolve as human beings, as a society, and also as individuals. Yet there are still some few complications that we have when it comes to education. We are not going to look at the whole subject today. We decided to look at school failure and school dropout. And to have this discussion with me, I have Mr. Prosper Begedu, who is an associate professor and also the director of American Connor at the University of Lomi. He has so many designations so far, but I'm keeping these two for now. <laughs> and also our regular Mr. Selom Olympio, who is an administrative processing agent today because he has also different <laughs> other titles. <laughs> so we are keeping a conversation on, like I said, education, school failure, and school dropout. So we would want to basically start with what education is itself and how it has evolved in terms of uh, individual society and all that. So I'll be starting with Mr. Prosper on this one. What is your understanding of education and how do you see it that it has evolved? Thank you very much, uh, Jerry. Um, education, simply put, is a process of acquiring knowledge, okay. a process of acquiring skills, a process of acquiring values through formal or informal means. Okay. Formal means, that is, it means uh, it is structured. Okay. Uh, informal means, it means it is casual. It can happen at any time okay. through teachers, through parents, through events, and so on and so forth. So education influences the behavior of a person and lead him to yield a result and to impact the society or the environment in which he is. Okay. He or she is. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. have to be gender neutral on this <laughs> yeah. one. So, Mr. Selom, what addition would you have to this? I think, Mr. Proper said everything, but I can just say uh, education is a process of acquiring. He talk about knowledge, values, mm -hmm. yeah. I can say morals. Okay. I can say information from past generation okay and it actually affect the way people behave i have a i have a friend that I usually say how someone behave reflect actually how much knowledge he has okay so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think <laughs> education is about all that okay so we do yeah. agree there has been some evolution you want yeah. to add something yeah i just want to say that uh, um, education actually stems from uh, okay. the latin word edu educare which okay. means uh, to bring out of and here in this uh, uh context we bring the individual yes. from ignorance okay. what okay. the person does not know and uh, the process lead him into something okay. into light into knowledge into something that he did not have uh, before now the when we're talking about how it has evolved um you see uh, even in the past in the ancient civilizations uh, there there was education education has always been there okay the only thing is that uh, it was uh, mostly oral mm -hmm. transmitted from uh, word of mouth uh, from one generation to, to the, the other but uh, with time it is taking other forms the written one and now today we are talking about the digital one so it is taking other forms better uh, what is the common point is a knowledge that is being transmitted exactly yeah the knowledge that is being transmitted because like you said it influences how people behave as well exactly now our topic is on education as well but we are also looking at two other things which is specifically school failure and the school dropout i know someone will be asking themselves i mean if you fail it means you will drop out but i think there sh there is if possible a, a definition or an understanding of what a school failure is i'm, I'm starting with you on this one again uh, okay uh, thank you very much jerry school uh, failure is uh, the inability of meeting a standard Okay. So when uh, um, a child or somebody is exposed to education, the expectation is for him to reach a certain standard. Okay. Now when the person is not able to reach that standard, then we talk about failure. Okay. Uh, the person is not able to get maybe the average. Okay. Then I will say that he cannot move forward because he's missing something. He needs to catch up with something before 
continuing. That is a failure. And the failure does not necessarily mean drop out. Okay. Okay. Because when somebody fails today, the person can continue and succeed. Okay. Now, when the person now decides, uh, they, 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 they drop out, it means uh, coming out of the system. Okay. Now, the, the, it means the person is no more in the educational system and the person cannot continue mm. to achieve the result that he is expected to achieve. Okay. Actually, you, you have something to add since you are both in different fields as well. Yeah, no. the school failure is the inability to meet expected grades okay. in school. That's basically how I can yeah basically it. put it. Because when you when you're schooling, their expectation, exactly their expectation, and when you can meet those expectations, we talk about failure. Okay. But dropout is not a failure. <laughs> Okay. Dropout is when you decide actually to stop schooling. Definitely, mm -hmm. you can fail, retry, and succeed. Mm -hmm. But when you decide to actually definitely stop, that's a dropout. Okay. Okay. And that is not what we want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't want failure, <laughs> but definitely we don't want dropout. Drop out. Out. No. <laughs> now, before we move to some of the factors that can cause the school failure and then the school dropout, yeah, there is one thing that keeps tingling in my mind that uh, maybe. If there is an early childhood education, could this still influence the performance of that student or learner in the future? Or how true is it that when you have an early child education, your performance in the future, whether, like he said, formal or informal sector of education, it can give you a better performance? I, I will start with you on, on this one. Okay. When we talk about early childhood education, I've done some research about it. Okay. And look like there are many studies that prove actually that mm -hmm. early childhood education mm -hmm. helps a lot a learner okay in and those studies shows that people who had early childhood education perform better okay. than people who didn't have it mm -hmm. but i won't say it's a general rule okay. sometimes people start very well and early but at the end, no. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Prosper, any yeah. this one? Um, No, I think he has said it all. When uh, the child is exposed early to um, reading, um, to thinking, critical thinking, and so on and so forth, it means it prepares him mm -hmm. to now um, get easily the knowledge when he's been taught. But uh, he has added something that is very important. Sometimes it can have also a reversal impact because okay. when uh, you want because some parents because they have exposed the child to this education early mm. they want the child to move you know ahead okay. of uh, even the level it's like a, the child yeah, is five years you want him to be in class four whilst there are standards where mm. the child is supposed to be five to six to before being the, in elementary sure, sure, and this, sure. it, there are studies that have shown that when the child moves very fast you are happy as a parent yes. at the same time you should know that there will be some impacts on him because mm -hmm. the behavioral uh, because the development stage is a psychological and also based on the age the yeah. behavior of the child because he will reach a level where he's not able to cope with things that he is being asked to and at that time it can be uh, uh, it can be it, it can have uh, an impact so I think uh, basically I can say that uh, when the child is exposed early to this he's at the same time prepared okay. to acquire skills that will help him to succeed okay so I think it is still good to start early child education but maybe done in a proper way not just yeah. the pride of my child is uh, I mean, advancing quickly in yeah, school yes. and, and all that yeah. now we are coming back to the very second question about school failure and school dropout we want to look at some of the factors and i have some uh, citations i made here but i was just going to cite one two three or four first of all i believe there could be family background that can constitute uh, some of those factors of course yeah. uh, school failure and school dropout we have the society the social courses mm -hmm. we have migration i brought this one in because there are some people, the more their parents move or the, maybe say their father or their mother who is maybe an instructor or a teacher, yeah. when they move, the children move with them and then they keep changing school and all that. Yeah. That's why I brought this one in. And then economic. 
and then policies that are initiated by either government, the ministries of education, and other subsectors that are stakeholders in education. So from your perspective, what are some factors, or if you can even explain some of these ones for us, right. that cause school failure and school drop away? Probably just adding the two together. Okay, I will jump on. I will jump on two. Okay, the economical one and the family one. Okay, on the family one, I think the low. Uh, how can I say the, the lack of support from the family mm -hmm. actually affects a learner. Okay. And poverty too really <laughs> affects a learner. <laughs> yeah, because in my neighborhood I have a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. When I talk to them and I ask them why have you stopped school or why are you keep failing, mm -hmm. he will say, when I come back from school I don't have anything to eat. I have to go back and find some jobs to do. Okay. That's not a, actually a proper environment to to succeed mm -hmm. when you're scrolling. Mm -hmm. So another thing is another factor I can say is the social one. Okay. When your friends or the people you are coping with in your neighborhood mm -hmm. have gang members or people who always don't do anything, don't go to school actually. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they will influence you mm -hmm. and make you stop scrolling. Okay. So one some of the factors I can talk about. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Prosper, yeah, I, I, I think I will just maybe start from where he, he ended. Uh, the, the environment mm -hmm. in which uh, you, 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 you live, the environment also influences uh, the child's results. Okay. If uh, uh, the child is not uh, having role models, Mm -hmm. And uh, people are not there to tell him that, uh, you know, education is good and uh, he has, uh, you know, bad companionship. It will mm -hmm. affect him. But apart from that, there is also something that we need to consider also is uh, uh, it is some disorders that some students okay, have, some yeah, children yeah, have. Yeah. So these disorders can be natural. So they need to maybe have the support of a psychologist. And so on. So that one also can affect uh, the result and can lead to school a failure. If, for example, the child is not prepared to eat and there are things that he needs to know to do and does not do it, uh, is very important. And another factor that I can uh, I can mention here is uh, the teaching methods okay. and uh, even the teachers. Um, Thank you for jumping into yeah. my next question. No, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. go ahead. I was because, coming to that. Yeah, because <laughs> it's very important um, when the methodology is not there. Because there are some students, you assess them on this, they fail. But you put them in another situation, you assess them, they will succeed. Exactly. It does not mean he does not know, but it is because he has not been well assessed mm -hmm. or he has not been well taught. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the teacher's role is key to the failure or, or influencing the failure or the success of, of, the, of, of, of the, the students. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So coming back to you, so the teacher quality, maybe the teacher him or herself, the teacher quality. Is, it, is, it, is he or she qualified enough? And also the methods that they use, are they also well structured to suit the student? I mean, how does he affect the, the student? You know, it's really important. The teaching method is really important because in U.S., uh, when student fails, mm. the first thing they do is the blame. Uh, fir the first blame goes to the teachers. <laughs> Why are your student failing? And I like a saying. I don't know if you know. You've heard about Albert, Albert Einstein. Okay, I've heard him. He he used to say, when you know it yourself very well, you can explain it to a five years old, and he will understand <laughs> exactly. And <laughs> <laughs> that shows that actually the way of teaching, the way of, you know, transmitting knowledge is not, a, is not an easy thing. Exactly. You can know something, and but you might not be able to actually teach me exactly. in a way that I can get it and understand it. And okay. in, I think sometimes to perhaps the way that teacher was taught is the same way he's transmitting. Yeah. So in some essence, maybe he, he or she hasn't rediscovered really the way in which he as a person himself in terms of the quality of him being a teacher right. to transfer that knowledge to the other person so it's like what the grandfather thought is what the father is teaching the son and the son is going to teach the grandchildren right. or whatever coming up exactly but it doesn't actually work like that exactly. since we are all different you have a different uh, ability to understand mm -hmm. you know that a student you have to spend hours mm. with them before they will understand something uh, or we have just to choose another way mm -hmm. of explaining the thing so well, sometimes i feel like uh, some students too they are just excuse <laughs> yeah. me to say yeah their head men 
I'm not trying to say this. People shouldn't come at me for this one. <laughs> I'm saying this because education, as important as it might be, maybe some people are in the wrong sector of it in the sense that he spoke earlier about formal and informal. Okay, yeah. Because this actually brings me to my next question, though, that maybe somebody is in a school setting, which is probably the formal sector, but maybe his way of whatever he's supposed to come out with is right. actually in the informal sector. Okay. Because sometimes when you tell somebody I'm in a vocational school, they feel like well, like you are not really there. You yeah. don't have that. Okay. I wanted to come to that because <laughs> in our society, uh, I don't know how I can put it. But mm. People think is education is just about schooling first, no. which yeah. is not the thing, which is not actually true. Mm. Education is not just in about the formal schooling. Mm. You can educate yourself at home. Mm -hmm. yeah, we talk uh, about yeah. school education. Exactly. Yes, yes. School education. <laughs> <laughs> home education, school education. Okay. okay. Yeah. So when it comes to the school education, mm -hmm. okay, we are on the teaching methods. Yes. Yeah, teaching methods is really important. Uh, especially in Africa, some of most of our education system is not actually practical. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to jump on mathematics. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of uh, on my side, a lot of students don't do good in mathematics because they don't really understand it. How to put it? In like when practice. you say x, y, they don't actually. They can't really relate. Picture. To it, they that don't. Thing, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They can't relate to it. They don't <laughs> picture what it's x and y. y. What is cosine, sine, all those things, but. If you find a teacher who can actually explain it, mm, maybe using in, mangoes and apples exactly or something. to it, <laughs> you should be. Yeah, we should be able to get it. Some students should be able to get, get it. it yeah. So yeah, the teaching method is really important. Now coming to the second aspect, I mean the other aspect, what I said, I think sometimes people prioritize the school education over the vocational actually, because I remember back in school, well, when I finished my high school, I went to polytechnic. And then I think my first year there was a strike and I had to move to journalism. Okay. But I realized that those some of my friends who were already in the university at those times doing courses like the sciences, the maths, the whatever, yeah. when they come back home and they start saying things, there's always that tendency of like, well, I'm in university. But I, I feel like sometimes we do forget that, like we all agreed early on, the information base and the knowledge is what is key. Right. So if somebody has to go to the university to acquire that information, you go to the polytechnic, it's not really bad. That's so why do people actually prioritize the traditional system or the schooling education over the vocational one? Okay, thank you very much, Jerry. If you allow me, I just want to say one thing before uh, okay, for, uh, yeah. about the former question okay. before coming okay, back okay. to it. I just want to uh, say that when we're talking about the act, pedagogical act is um, like a triangle. Okay. So we have uh, the learner, mm -hmm. we have the teacher, and we have the uh, the teaching okay the teaching okay. so these three influence the results okay so when the teaching that means the content mm -hmm. of the teaching mm -hmm. is not well defined mm -hmm. well determined well processed and well prepared it will be very hard for it to be transmitted or to be taught Okay. When the teacher, who is the second, okay, uh, in that triangle, one um, angle is um, the teacher is not qualified because there are. Uh, when you talk about um, the teaching method, it has to do with passion also. Exactly. When the teacher is not passionate <laughs> about teaching, mm -hmm. and um, he just consider teaching as a, a job, like mm, you know, because I don't <laughs> get anything to do. I just want to, you know, um, spend some time getting some pays, and so it will not be good if there is a heart, there is a passion then the teacher will design ways. Exactly. I remember when I was in um, um, junior secondary school in a form one, um, my English teacher, uh, I'm, I'm interviewing him now because, <laughs> you know, he, she will come, she's a, a, a woman, she will come to class with some, you know, small cars mm. and teaching us colors. You say, this car is yellow, this car is red. Uh, so yeah, you can okay. picture it. Exactly. Right. There was another teacher in that same school who was coming to class with a gu the guitar, okay. playing and teaching, English true songs. Wow. So it, it it shows that there is passion in it. Yes. So and the last one is uh, the student, the learner. Mm. So the learner also need to be equipped. If the learner is not ready, mm. you might do everything. You will not if the, the learner does not have the capacities, you cannot, you know, do magic. 
So all these uh, three elements are very important when we are talking about uh, acquiring knowledge and succeeding. I think now coming, okay, uh, go ahead, go now ahead. coming to uh, vocational, <laughs> vocational and uh, also traditional or the schooling. Or yeah, the schooling. Or I think um, all of us cannot go in one direction. Exactly, and uh, that is why everybody should know his or her skills mm. where he or she is good at and uh, that one also lead me to talk about uh, when parents for example are forcing their child to study mathematics to study law, a law <laughs> or these things <laughs> because uh, there are a lot of uh, prestige exactly. that, to it. that is a way yeah we need <laughs> to um understand that all of us cannot go in the same direction and uh, you need to know what the child likes Mm -hmm. and what is he or she good at and this will lead him to go for vocational or to go for even technical the, uh, technical, yeah, and so technical. Right. so, so yeah. your, your submission what do you think about that why yeah, i think the word apart from the prestige what what else could be that feeling that like everybody wants to go people. into the school side of education yeah I, 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 from I think my, that's the major. That's the major reason why people. The money, yeah, money, because people the say money that, and yeah, doctors you, you, are you, more. You, you, you exactly. More. exactly. <laughs> and people think, yeah, doctors are paid more. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can do a vocational education, and you will get pay like way I mean, higher. No, no more, even more. There are people who yeah, no. I, I remember some time ago here we had issues with the service and that they had to fly some people from outside the country. Exactly. actually come and fix it yeah? exactly it's not small money they are going to pay. <laughs> yeah. they might not even be paid in a local currency oh, right. who knows okay now i want to talk about uh, i'll do a, a little twist i want to talk about the long-term effects because we've already outlined some of the courses we've looked at some of the preferential in terms of vocational and then the traditional certificate education we've looked at the teacher quality and a number of things right. but now we are still focusing on the school failure and the school dropout what are some of the long-term effects? I will start with Mr. Prosper on this one. What are some of the long-term effects that school failure and school, school dropout can have on the individual himself, maybe the society, the nation, I don't know, maybe the whole globe as, as a whole? Yeah. Um, education is very important. Mm -hmm. It's key. It's power. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Nelson Mandela has put it very clearly. Because it is true that people say that, uh, you know, uh, when they are talking about education, uh, the impact of education, people are just talking about money. They say, oh, even if you don't go to school, you can make money. It's also, no, making money is very good. I'm not saying that it's bad. But at the same time, making money without values. Exactly will not be helpful to you and will not be helpful to the society. So I think the education that we are talking about, school education that we are talking about, if you have the possibility, go for it. It's very good and it is going to help you uh, for, for your future life. Now, the long-term effect um, will be visible um, at various levels. The first one can be low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Low self-esteem in the sense that when the person even sometimes has the money, he is in some situations he feels low self uh, he feels very low because the other people are saying this they are conversing in this mm. they are saying this but he's not able to do it and he can even go and pay a lot of money mm. uh, sometimes even to do some small thing exactly. he's not able to do it and other people will come and take much more of his money to do it so um, there, will, there will be this uh, uh, process of uh, low self esteem and at the same time when the person is not educated and is not qualified, mm. it's difficult for the person to get the skills needed for this or that job employment. So it will lead him to unemployment. Mm -hmm. And when it leads to unemployment, it leads to poverty. When it leads to poverty, it can lead to bad behavior that can lead to imprisonment and uh, any other thing that we can, uh, we can talk about. So we should discourage that. Uh, uh, by all the energy we can uh, school uh, drop out school failure because it is not helpful to the individual okay so I'll, I'll come with you now on this one before we take our last Mr. question Papa says so many things that I don't know how to <laughs> add. Uh, I once heard uh, Barack Obama said when you think education if you think education is expensive try ignorance <laughs> exactly well <laughs> wait till you see how much ignorance can cost yeah so he said it all. Education is 
the key, the a major key of every society. If you are here speaking English, it's because we're learning. Because exactly. I'm a French speaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Mr. Prosper too is Togolese, so yeah. <laughs> but we, here we are speaking English. English. Very well as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Education open your doors that ignorance can't open. Exactly. Like he said early on, with the, from the Latin aspect, you draw out of ignorance. Exactly. So, I just want us to touch one, 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 if possible, on each of these points. What would be the role of a parent? First, that of a teacher, and also in terms of government, when it comes to eliminating school failure and school dropout, or maybe on the opposite side, to enhance effective education, so that when that effective education is there, we can minimize the number of school failures and then the number of school dropout. I think I'll start with a prosper on this okay. one. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think you, the, the three um, things that you mentioned are key okay. for, um, you know, either to lead to school failure or school um, success. Or, okay. Yeah. Now, um, when I take the case of the parents, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the child is coming from a home. Mm -hmm. And um, if the parents, as you talk about, did not, don't value education, Mm. If the parents don't value education, like there are, my, like 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 my uh, my my mother or other parents will say, I did not go to school, but I want you to go as far as you can. <laughs> I will yeah. stop support you. Yeah. But if the parent is not there to support, it mm. is not good, and the society is not there to support, it's not good for the child. Mm. That is number one. Now, if the parent is careless, is not ready to spend money, you know there are some parents like that. They can yeah. go and buy food, buy drink. Yeah. And uh, you know they are not care. <laughs> they, they 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 don't care about the education of the child. The child is sick. They are not ready to go, but they can spend that money to do so. Care, the, the the carelessness of the parents uh, can really cause school failure or school drop okay. And now, when talking about the the the, the, the teachers, yes, yes, yes. and uh, I think the teachers' role we mentioned it before. Yeah, the passion they, aspect is what yeah, is really important. Yeah, it's mind. important <laughs> and because the teachers. You know, sometimes uh, some parents want to say, "Okay, I send my child to school. Go." They will. Uh, help you there the and uh, I'm free I'll go and cut, uh, cut. no there is, should be a complicity mm. between uh, the parents and the, the teachers. teachers the parents should do a follow up on uh, how the child is behaving mm. and uh, the result there are some parents they don't look at even the, the books of the child of, the, of their children you mean and, report cards and yeah stuff. and some teachers also that I, I don't say all of them some <laughs> are not there to kill themselves they will say I'm not your I'm not your father I'm not your I'm not your mother I will not kill myself for you I mean, the environmental <laughs> situations yeah, I will not kill not myself but uh, they should kill themselves for, for the child because knowing that that child can become the teacher of your children Exactly. Yeah, because if you don't that, train that him well, <laughs> if you don't train him well, uh, mm. tomorrow and uh, he is the one to train your children. What will happen? So you need to know that uh, as you are doing it for him, you are not doing it for him alone or for her alone. You are doing it for a whole society exactly. and the world who can contribute. Now the government, I think the government is responsible for making sure that we have the infrastructure that is necessary for the education. So if you have the necessary infrastructure, I think, and uh, the environment is conducive for a good teaching, uh, to be very helpful. And also, if the government that makes available the teachers, mm -hmm. if uh, mm -hmm. they, we don't have the number of teachers that is needed, it will be good. But I know that the government is doing a lot, for example, in our country, especially in training. Okay. And the teachers are going for recycles. Okay. They are going for retrainings in order to update their knowledge in terms of teaching methods, in terms of teaching strategies. And uh, this is very helpful to them because they don't stay for long without going for retraining mm -hmm. and they are doing it. So all these three uh, components are very key for the success of students. We need, we need government as well to bring in reforms and policies yeah. that can still be helpful because I went to primary school without having to i was taught it in, uh, information technology right. we never saw computer in our school <laughs> and i mean the teachers have you know it is a computer but like right. having a particular lab where exactly. i mean you go you press and all that I, it was until i read junior high school that i started we had it although right. i had it at home but you know <laughs> that is individual some, not yeah. everyone has but it we, exactly. have that chance yeah. so what what were some of the roles of the parent teachers and government in terms of effective education and also to minimize school failure and school dropout yeah 
uh, let's talk about the government. Okay. I think the go the all, all those three you talk about ha actually has have a really significant role in okay. education. Okay. But when we jump on government, the environment is really important. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are in uh, rain season right now in Togo, <laughs> and as you can see on TikTok, yeah, yeah, there are people who actually video record some school, some public school. You will see the whole school flooded with water. Flooded with water. How can they learn. people learn in that condition? <laughs> How can our <laughs> little brother can learn in that condition? That's one thing. Um, another thing about the government too is the the program okay the program when i was in primary and secondary school our program was i think it was too large oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. was <laughs> so large like you have to it's like you're learning everything you're you're learning learning everything you not probably use and some of yeah them, all of <laughs> I, them. i've asked him one of my little brother in my neighborhood the last time he mm. told me that that's what we are learning now and i was like oh really <laughs> in my time, it was more than <laughs> it was really, really more. Do you mean that really it has been reduced? Yeah. Okay. That's why he's yeah. Uh -huh. He has been really reduced, and even how the I, I remember when I went to Bakalaria okay. in Togo, uh, the the rate of people who succeed was thirty five percent. Okay. It was really low, mm. and actually that doesn't actually push people to mm. to go to school okay. like. Okay. If out of 100, only 35 <laughs> will actually maybe, succeed. Maybe they feel like, <laughs> will I also be part of those 35? Will exactly. I, be sure? I mean, you can discourage people. Exactly. It's actually exactly really discourage people. But the last time when they, uh, the, result, the re result of baccalaureate part one came out, they say 65 or wow. even more. 72. I 72. Think. Exactly. I was like, really? Congratulations. Really? Congratulations. <laughs> actually, yeah. They actually encourage people to go to school. And the, the, the teachers, the teachers, mm -hmm. the teachers, yeah, they have to know that the learner they are teaching today mm -hmm. are going to be tomorrow the minister, the president, mm -hmm. the director. So they have to know that the future of the country, of like the whole world, depend on those people. Mm -hmm. Maybe today they are just seeing them as like small boys. Small yeah, boys, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm coming to make my money and go back home, but no. They are doing more than that. They have to know that. They have to actually realize that what they are doing is really mm -hmm. important for the whole country and even for the whole for the society. They have to realize that. And when it comes to the learner the, himself, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, all I can say is you have to go to school, and education is really important <laughs> to them. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we, we've touched on a number of things. I mean, this topic, we can go on and on and on and about it, but right. uh, we are limited within space of time. So I will take your last word. What advice do you have for those who are watching us, for the parents, for the teachers, government, even the learners themselves? What can we learn from this yeah, topic? Thank you very much. Um, education is a fundamental right. Okay. And that parents, everybody should strive to send children to school and also support them not to fail or not to drop out mm -hmm. and uh, um, to end i would just say that um, we need as much as we can everyone to support children in our neighborhood in our mm -hmm. churches in our environment to go to school mm -hmm. it might not be money it can just be a word of encouragement okay and uh, that can change a you life. can buy a shoe you can a buy something. Like something you don't have to have much to give. but support yeah. And uh, it can change a life. And I, 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 I will also agree that um, if you are conscious that the child that you are teaching today might mm. become <laughs> a president, might right. become a minister, you will be proud because one day you will say, you know, I was part, uh, of, that I, I was part of that. So I think uh, teachers, we want to praise you and we want to encourage you to keep on doing your job. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Salem, what do you yeah. have for our viewers? Uh, Mr. Purpose, everything I will just add uh, to the government, the parents, and the, the teacher, and the learner itself. Ignorance mm. is not good at all. If you think, I will say it again, <laughs> if you think education is expensive, is expensive try ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. 
Okay, so thank you very much for coming. I've had on the key point for this episode, Mr. Prosper Begedu, who is an associate professor and the director of American Kana at the University of Lomi, and also Mr. Selom Olympio, who is an administrative processing agent. Thank you very much for honoring this invitation. Thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> so we've come to the end of the key point episode for this week. We'll be seeing you next week. Catch us every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Catch us on YouTube. On also Facebook as well, keep on with double I. So we meet you next week. It's a bye.